Hallelujah. Now it's time for a cup of tea. A cuppa. A cuppa. We're, uh, we're going to have a cup of tea right now with our next caller. who We just uh, bugged at work. He's actually working a, a straight, serious job now. Garrett Kirkland. Hey, Garrett. How you doing? Hey, what's up, guys? Calling from the office on a uh, private number, right? Oh, yeah. Top secret, man. Top secret. Now you're, uh, you're, you're all official. Um, what, uh, we, we, I want to talk a lot. A lot of different topics with you, but the big thing for you that you're working on right now is coming up in two weeks, right? Yeah, the big art at the Fed rally, September 22nd. Uh, you know, over at the Commons, then going over to the Fed. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty big. We're gonna be uh, live streaming across the country. We're gonna have um, be connected into all the national movements happening at all the regional banks across the country. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty big. And uh, there was some some private discussion we just had off off you know off off the uh, stream about one of the potential people that might be coming out to speak at this event and you were not sure if you should even tell well, tell us about it what's the deal who might come and what are your reservations about it well right now we actually don't even have any actual speakers um partly because of the permits on the bandstand but um it's been suggested, and we're going to try to reach out to Judge Jim Gray that um, he might come out for the, for our event here in Boston and do some speaking. Um, the details need to ham- be hammered out on that, but no, it was only a debate because um, you know I like Gary Johnson, I like third party candidates, but their party's pla- their candidacy's platform is pretty weak on the Federal Reserve. I mean, they they say art of the Fed, but then I've read statements from Johnson saying that. You know, if he doesn't want the Congress to get involved with the Federal Reserve and that needs to remain independent and that even though they were responsible for the bust, um, the big housing bubble bust that took everything down to this collapse we're in, he, um, he, uh, com- he commends them for, for mitigating the damage, like basically commending them for just bailing everybody out. Like mitigating damage was inflation. That's the, the real damage hasn't even revealed itself yet. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um you know, I think he plays pragmatic too much on it, and he's using a libertarian, like, because, you know, the libertarian's against regulation, but I don't know any libertarian that's against, like, I I, I feel like if, you know, if I have Gary Johnson on the show, we get around Judge Jim Gray, we need to get them on camera and ask them the question, do you think it's fair to have a private monopoly of all our all of our currency? Because that really seems to be the primary issue on this uh, this Federal Reserve Bank is that they have the monopoly on, on currency and financing. Not just the currency, actually. It's the financing, too. How money's created, how credit's created, how things are financed. Any bank loan that you go to get a bank, you know, a loan from a bank anywhere in America, basically, is through the Federal Reserve System. Like, how is yeah, that no, I- f- fair as a libertarian? Is there any choice there? Because I, I, I think that... Uh, I agree that, you know, I'm glad that you're bringing this up, that some of the statements of Gary Johnson on the Fed have not been cool. And he needs to do better on on this issue because I know that he's trying to reach out to the Ron Paul folks. And I think that a lot of what you see on, like, the Daily Paul and some of these other websites where they're not that happy with Gary Johnson, I think it's coming from what you're saying, Garrett. So I think that... uh, I know Gary Johnson, I've watched him, and I think that he does listen to the people, and I think that's the great thing about him as a candidate, is that he will move, and that he will acknowledge issues, like he did with medical marijuana and marijuana legalization when he was governor. You know, he didn't campaign on this, but he eventually did campaign on it. He he didn't initially take up the cause, but eventually he did. He was one of the first people in this country, first governor, to ever come out while in office and want legal marijuana, so... I think it's great that you're bringing it up. Um, so hopefully he'll come out. Hopefully we get Judge Jim Gray there. Two week we're gonna have him at the Freedom Rally. Let's ask him and find out if he's definitely coming. And, and uh, that that would be a great thing to have him back two weeks in a row, and we can do some video and 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 get some activism done that day. That's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, the invitation is being extended out. Um, I mean, he's expressed interest from what I understand from the National and the Fed guys. Um, so hopefully we'll have them out there. I mean, we're not going to have any, um, you know, like official, uh, you know, like stand or a box or someone to stand on. Uh, but, you know, we'll have the bullhorns out there. And anybody who wants to speak that wants to speak about the Federal Reserve, the need for, you know, accountability and transparency is going to be more than welcome to uh, to say their piece at the end of our day there. I, but, de- um, I definitely want to speak if I can get there, you know, 
you know, at the right time, if you know, the right moment. Um, I also would like uh, to make sure that you're going to be calling in that day and let everyone know that you guys will be calling in from the end of the rally into the, into the two hot heads where activism happens show, right? Yeah, by the time by the time you guys go on the air, we'll be at the Federal Reserve. Um, if maybe having speakers, maybe just rallying there. But we'll be at the Fed by the time you start your show. Um, so, you know, we'll definitely check in. I'll touch base with you guys, say what's going on. But, um, yeah, but no, I mean, you've also raised um, uh, an important point with the monetary policy before. I mean, the Federal Reserve is responsible for not only, you know, creating the, the money that we use, but it's also responsible for regulating the banking and financial, um, you know, uh, parts of our economy. They're responsible for, like, pretty much everything. They're supposed to be the watchdogs and the safeguards because Congress is not supposed to be able to, to be able to do it or whatever. It's, that was the big scam. Was Congress failed and the market crashed, and so give it to these private banks. But now they're failing even worse. I mean, the, the dollar's been destroyed. And so, like, while there's, like, the, you know, other issues, like, you know, should we have just a single currency? Should we have multiple currencies? And I'm, I'm in favor of regional currencies and stuff like that. Um, you know, we just got to take it one step Me at a time too. and identify this beast, you know, expose it, and then and get rid of it. Can we Bring talk, that yeah. power back to the Congress. And then we can talk about breaking up, you know, like, um, uh, legal tender laws and stuff like that. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to uh, actually post a uh, video from Bernie Sa- uh, Bernie Sanders, am I saying his right name right? Gar- Bernie Sanders, right? Yeah, I mean, um, Bernie. Yeah, that's how you say it. All right, Bernie Sanders. I always wonder sometimes if it's Saunders in my head. I don't know why I get these weird, but it's Bernie Sanders, the, the uh, senator from Vermont. I believe he's a senator. Maybe he's a congressman. Senator, I believe. He's a, he's a U.S. senator. Okay, U.S. senator. And uh, the video, he's a, he's basically calling out the Federal Reserve System and asking. And, and this is fact that you know by charter there's a certain amount of banks that are that are on the Federal Reserve board so basically what you have is the Federal Reserve is a private institution as you said regulating the banks but on their board board of directors by charter of this monopoly is the private banks themselves like Jamie Dimon who runs one of the largest banks uh, JP Morgan Chase He's on the board of directors of the Federal Reserve. Does that make sense that the people that they're regulating are on the board of directors of the regulators? It's like, you, you how can you be a police officer and a gangster at the same time? It doesn't make sense to me, and it's so obvious. And I think the problem on this issue is that the American people have no friggin' clue. They don't even know, they don't understand any of this. They don't know what's going on. Yeah, no, it's and it's not even just that they're responsible for regulating and policing themselves. I mean, a lot of these banks that are serving on the regional boards are, are issuing bailouts to their own companies. I mean, this, yeah. as Bernie Sanders touched on that in one of his letters to Bernanke and all these different things, um, that's a supreme conflict of interest when, I mean, you're you're lending money to yourself while you're supposed to be policing yourself and you're the... Cre- it's just crazy, you yeah, know? Yeah, that is. I mean, think about that. That is... Brings and then it they up. even take in personal yeah. loans. Like Christy Mack, um, she's She's an individual, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the company right now, I don't have my the papers and stuff with me, but I mean, she took a loan from the Federal Reserve privately. Yeah, think about that. You know, like, if Obama wrote himself, or, or Clinton, or uh, Bush, or whoever was the president, or the congressperson, and wrote themselves a, a check for $800 billion from the, from the Treasury, that would be, that would be, no one would allow that. But the Federal Reserve basically has this, has has been able to do that. The, these these private bankers oh, are based, and no one says anything. Oh, it's it's totally secretive. I mean, there's no. I mean, it took you know a, a good fight and a lot of compromise for Bernie Sanders to even get us the the three year peak that we got. You know, the show is, you know, Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse each each almost got three hundred billion dollars in almost zero percent interest loans from the Federal Reserve. I mean, they're just printing all this cash out, and you know, at the end of the day, people who save their money in dollars, people that are getting paid in dollars. Anybody that a dollar affects is going to be affected by hyperinflation if we don't start to do something about it now. Yep. What do you think about someone like Elizabeth Warren that's running right now for U.S. Senate in Massachusetts who is running on a campaign that says that she's the, um, she's the inspiration of the Occupy movement. She's the person that's against the banks. She wants to regulate them. Do you, do you trust her? Do you believe in her? What do you think about her and, and her stance on the banks? I... Th- you know, I don't, 
I think Elizabeth Warren is laughable at best. I think she's just playing a lot of platitudes to the to the Occupy crowd and trying to get a lot of um, like liberal Democrats and people that are leftists or you know heavily anti-war in their leanings. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, she supports war. I mean, uh, you know, she's going to try to say like, yeah, you know, the banks are are this and need to be you know got in line and put a leash on them or whatever. But at the same time, she's a warmonger. I mean, her policies are all pro-war, pro-Israel, pro fucking anti-Iran. It's it's ridiculous. So I think she's a joke if she's saying that she's you know the philosophical um, like embodiment of the 99 percent you know philosophy. It's yeah, she basically because- said she was the basis of it. She almost, it was almost like one of those statements like Al Gore when he invented the internet. You know, like she was the person that <laughs> that the, because of her they they decided to occupy. Like that's what it almost seemed like the statements. They were kind of yeah. ludicrous. But, um, yeah, I must have missed that memo. <laughs> yeah, Howie Cobb brings it up a lot. That's why I, I, I kind of, uh, I, it's a stuck in my head from him. But um, Yeah, no, she's just, you know, like any good politician, she's just trying to play off and, and get as many supporters as she can oh, yeah. by saying whatever empty nonsense she can sputter. Oh, yeah. And, and she kind of ran away from the Occupy movement once it wasn't as good for her politically. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. But, uh, you know, I look at someone like her and I say, where are you on Audit the Fed? Where are you... On uh, John Corzine, Corzine, the former Goldman Sachs head who campaigned with Obama, gave Obama a ton of money in 2008, who Joe Biden said was the person that they had to call and go to when the financial crisis hit. And basically John Corzine told them to go bail out the banks and they did it. And then this guy, John Corzine, steals people's farms. He has a company called MF Global. They're out of money. They're bankrupt. They they have no money left. So what they did, and I'm going to say that John Corzine know, knew exactly what he was doing, and he did this. They owed the money to Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan, that other company. They owed the money. They were bankrupt. What did they do? They took the money from the farmers. They took their private accounts and stole that money and gave it. So it's basically like paying your bill with somebody else's money. And, that, and then they turned around and said that it was they lost the paperwork. They don't know what happened, which is a bold-faced lie. Anybody in this industry, which I was in this industry for over 10 years. I was a licensed financial advisor. I man- managed people's money. The number one cardinal sin, the number one rule for any regulatory agency, whether it's in Massachusetts or the feds or the, or the SEC or the uh, FINRA, is you do not co-mingle money. You do not take a client's money ever. You don't. You don't put them in the same account, and they did that. And the proof is in the pudding because the guy from J.B.P. Morgan was the um, the regular. You know, he's basically hired as the compliance manager. Every firm has a compliance manager. He was the person that knew that this trade there was something wrong with it. That J that uh, MF Global didn't have the money, and the only way that they could have covered this loss is to steal their client's money. And he had Corzine's group. Sign a piece of paper saying that they that it was not commingled money, and Corzine's ass is on the line on this, and he's still not going to jail. Eric Holder says no charges will be filed, and Elizabeth Warren says shit about it. This guy stole people's farms, like farmers, American farmers who had farms, family farms for life. They all invested in this company. Their money is gone. There's no investigation. When John Corzine goes behind goes before the U.S. Congress, they call him the Honorable John Corzine as he lies, as he withholds, as he passes the, the buck to a lower-level employee. He still won't tell us where the money went. There's no investigation at his company. There's no investigation within the U.S. Criminal Justice Department uh, under the Obama, Obama administration. Elizabeth Warren is silent. She doesn't say anything about it. She's all about the banks. Here's the biggest banking scandal since Madoff. He's a Democrat, former governor of New Jersey, and you're silent on it, Elizabeth Warren. I'm calling that bullshit. That's bankrupt. Same with Obama. Same with Biden. And, you know, i, I got to even call out the Republicans. Where are you on this? Why aren't you raising holy hell about John Corzine? I don't get it. This is this is my Mike Can rant this week. I get so fired up. I just... Garrett, I'm so glad to have you on the show and uh, bringing this issue up. This is why we need to continue to talk about this, to expose what's going on. 
Yeah, man. Well, I mean, that's, you know, the most important thing pe- anybody could do is, is, you know, we need to talk about these things. Like, you know, at our dinner tables, in our communities, with our friends, like, whatever. Like, we need to be involved in our government. We need to be involved in these things that affect us, even if they're boring or, you know, maybe talking about monetary policy makes your eyes glaze over, you know, but it affects us sig- significantly and severely. Yeah. And, and to bring it up is the number one thing you can do, I think, for this, you know, where we are. But I also continue to wonder about that uh, Jason Nelson. I brought this up last time you, you were in the studio. It's like, should we also just start creating our own currency? Isn't that almost like the solution? It's just to, to, to really challenge the government and start, you know, creating our own regional currencies. Like, let's start one in Cambridge, you know? I know this oh, absolutely. Is- I mean... There have been instances of uh, communities that have done it. Um, you know, Ithaca Hours. Um, you know, there's there's been instances where it works, and it does work because communities need to be self-sufficient. And you know, we can provide what we actually need for ourselves. We'll have to take out these gross loans from from banks. <laughs> yep. Regional currency is one way to do it. Local, regional. Start trading with your your buddies and your neighbors. <laughs> And there, are, there are they are out there too. You have to look them up. Time banks. There's a Cambridge Time Bank out here in Cambridge. Um, I just wish it was more active. I wish it was more widespread. You know that that's one of the things. Like uh, some of the cities and towns, like Ithaca Hours, Madison Hours, Madison Hours seem really like they're really kicking ass out there, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I I would love to see more alternative currencies out there because I think that's the way we need to. Ch- that's one way we can challenge what they're doing and also create more education because people are going to realize the difference between a Madison hour and a U.S. dollar and, and why one is actually better than the other, in my opinion, is one is socially just, fair. It's, 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 it's not uh, you know something that hurts people. And I think the U.S. dollar at this point hurts more people than it's helping. Am I wrong on yeah, that, no, it, that You nailed it exactly on the head. Yeah? All right, good. <laughs> I'm supposed to be interviewing you, and I'm just going off on rants. I just this, this issue yeah, really man. fires me up. That, you know, that's how it gets done. You know, it's it's there's a lot of heart and emotion, and there's uh, you know these are important issues. I, mean, I know important issues to you, important issues to me. So I always enjoy a good uh, rant and uh, and return rant with yeah. you, my brother. Yeah. But um, I'm actually going to hop off this and get back to my uh, quote unquote work. September twenty second. So, September, September 20... 22nd, I just put up a link um, to the event page up on your Facebook, um, Two Hot Heads Facebook page. And, um, yeah, we'll see. The, hopefully see everybody at the table next week. Oh, yeah. We're going to be giving out on at the Fed at the table, the Two Hot Heads table. So come down and see Garrett. Come down and see us all. But uh, two weeks from today, September 22nd, we'll be down at the Boston, Freedom, uh, at the Boston Common again. So two weeks in a row we're going to do this. And the uh, 22nd is the big National Audit the Fed Day, and we'll be doing it in Boston with Garrett. So thank you for calling in today, Garrett. Thank you. And that's how September is done. <laughs> yes, it is. This is. We get our activism right. started right in the beginning of the school year. Get all these college kids activated. Damn right. We're going to take them back to school. All right, brother. Peace. <laughs> Later. And that's uh, what we're doing. September, October, November, we get an election. This is an important time to get active. So I encourage everyone to come out over the next two weeks. You got next Saturday for marijuana reform, and then the following Saturday for banking, finance, and audit the Fed. That's what it's about. It's about the money. And uh, all these issues really do come down to money and greed, if you really look at them in the institutions that are up against us. So we got to challenge them. I expect to see lots of people out. I can't wait to see you all the next two weeks, the next two Saturdays. Unregularradio.com, two hot heads where activism happens.